Oh, wow. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. This was a little bit junky. I was trying something out. Uh, didn't work as planned. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, good evening. Hello, hello. Welcome to the show. Gonna uh, install some wallets today. We're gonna answer some questions. We have a special guest in the house as well. Gonna bring him on right now, actually. Welcome to the show, Don Montaya. What's up, everybody? And this is the co founder of internetmoney.io, which is gonna be the first wallet that we're gonna install today. And check out, have a look. See how it's working and let me check up real quick. Okay. Hey, hey, Anna McCurry, someone in chat. Hello, everybody. So let's just double check that everything's working. It's gonna be a little bit junky in the beginning, I guess. I'm gonna stop this. Uh, and then we're going to share this and we're going to start with black papers. Let's actually go to the original website. Internet money wallet, the future of finance, earn passive income, free your time. That is the slogan. Got this juicy money logo here. Uh, and just like the money symbol indicates, you can also earn some money on this on this uh, little wallet. So if we scroll down a little bit, uh, there is a this an introduction to the ecosystem in general. You see it is on iOS and on Apple and on Chrome. Are, are you tr expanding actually to other browsers, Brave? And uh, I wouldn't use Brave, by the way, everybody listening in. But uh, and lots of people still use other browsers like um, Firefox, Firefox and so on. Are you, yeah, are you trying to expand to that? Yeah, as of now, um, we're going to make our V1 nice and tight. And then part of our V2 push in the background on the roadmap will be to expand to uh, other browsers. And also, while you're going through this, we, we, we are undergoing a full website revamp with some really cool uh, 3D mm. animations and tighten up our look a little bit. That's actually going to be ready very soon. Um, <laughs> some of the wording is going to tighten up too. So, yeah, you you need those spacey connecting dots uh, animations. Everybody has them. Everybody gotta have them. Just oh, to look great. cool. Yeah, they're that's great. where where everything's at. And they were created by an artist in our community. So they were um, one of the most talented artists I've ever seen. And I'm really excited mm -hmm. to to push out. And you've probably seen them in our Telegram chat. The the alien waving high and spinning the coins things of that nature so um he will be featured yeah. on our website and that's actually one of the biggest po points for this specific wallet and that is the community aspect because this one is created by community members for community members uh it launched as a sacrifice by the way the sacrifice website is not up anymore i had to check it out in the archives so that's a little bit sad for me that you removed that. Um, well, you could always go to... I would like uh, to see that back. Correct. If you go to internetmoney.io forward slash points, we still have that points calculator up there. Um, but, you know, with recent uh, events, we definitely want to be... Slash points? Yep. Oh, okay, for recent events. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, you still have the listing and everything, details, yep. top wallet. So you can still get yeah. to that information uh, if you need to internetmoney.io forward slash points. Yeah, I, I thought it might be just interesting for people that come in later to know what has been the allocations, who, who what is the sacrifice rate and so on. So that would be interesting to know if you somehow put that back on the website. But this is the big, the biggest point. Like it was made by the community. It was a fair launch. Um, if you are obviously the sacrifice is over, but you can get the coins on the market if you wanted to. And you can still provide feedback because it's a rather small, tight project. You have a big impact on it right now. So you can have your dream features in the wallet. You can talk to the team directly. There is no uh, like massive corporation that is blocking and uh, hiding the devs or something. You, you get direct input. So this is one of the big points for Internet Money Wallet. 
Yeah, thank you for pointing that out. And I'd also like to point out, too, on that note, uh, when people people do email us through the app, um, we don't collect your email addresses. So the only way to respond to you is if you voluntarily provide an email address in the body of the email. It does get kind of frustrating when people are asking us questions and saying, hey, you're not responding to me, but there's no way to contact them. So we're very keen on not touching any of your data. Um, email address is one of them. Even if you made up a fake one, we still don't want to know what it is. So if you are trying to contact us, the best place to do so is in our telegram chat, t.me forward slash internet money dot io. All of our socials are internet money dot io or internet money io. I'm sorry. There's no dot in the telegram. Uh, internet money io. Yeah. t.me right. slash internet money dot io. Actually, let me drop that into the chat. T dot m e that's internet money io here you go everybody there it is and i kind of lost my point i wanted to point oh yeah, yeah i remember now uh actually regarding this side note uh I, where is it? Oh my God, it closed. No, there it is. Okay. There it is. I'm going to pop that open. Yeah. And it probably won't open though. The load, will it not? Not now. Go away. Ah, oh, it will. Okay. Or maybe not. Yes, it will. Okay. So here you go. Uh, you may see this message when updating to Chrome extension. And the message is read and change your data on connecttrezor.io, internetmoney.io. Read your browsing history. So the, the permission, it's just badly named. You don't need to worry. Um, we So this is from internetmoney.io. We cannot read your browsing history. We collect no data from you, period. When making improvements to Wallet Connect, permissions have to be given in order to open a Chrome extension on its own dedicated tab. So it's just one point that I noticed, but yeah, it's cleared up pretty fast. So you you might you might see that. And uh, if you want to double check while you're installing the the actual wallet, so we're gonna actually do that right now. We're gonna go to Chrome, and we're gonna add to Chrome here. There you go. And then you see it pops up with the permissions, but it's not as bad as it sounds. It's just badly worded. Right. I'm gonna add the extension. Is it gonna end? Yes, there we go. We don't need to sync. And one of the things, it, it populates here into this extension tab. If you are a new user, you might not notice it immediately, but you can actually pin it. And this is actually, also, my first feedback, right, is, is it actually visible? Oh, it's probably not visible. I forgot about that. Uh, OK, let's redo that. I'm actually in the wrong view. One moment. Please excuse the technical difficulties. <laughs> Crypto is tough, man. It's not easy. Yeah, so the thing is, we're, we're currently, we are in in the StreamYard view, and StreamYard does not catch the pop-up windows here. Uh, I, can on, I can only do that with a special trick that we're going to use now. And for that, you might disappear. I'm sorry if that happens. Uh, we'll, we'll see how we'll deal with that. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to go on full screen. Can you still talk? Actually, you can still interact. I can hear you perfectly. Can you yes. hear me? Okay. Awesome. Yes. So we got the internet money crypto wallet. This is the bigger view. Enhanced view. We go add to Chrome. And then here we go. You see the pop-up. It can rechange your connector trezor and internetmoney.io. Read your browser history. So this is a little bit scary for new users, but it's fine. Nobody's reading your browser history, actually. So we go to Add extension. It's going to install really quick. We don't need to sync. This is just for um, 
the browser management for profiles. And then what most people don't know is here in this little extension tab, you can actually pin the wallet so that it's always displaying and then you don't have to search for it. Uh, if you can, by the way, put, put a little info tab on your website that people, people know how to do this. Because yeah, a lot of new yeah, users yeah. that that are going to come to you, they they might not be able to find it immediately. Yeah, there it is. You can move it around. That's a great idea. Thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. And then here we are with the wallet, and immediately we'll see that there are two opciones. There are two opciones. You got the new to crypto and the experienced with crypto. Actually. Mm. Is there a way to bring you up as well? Oh, it's a little bit junky. Okay, one moment. Yeah, and while you're working on that, anybody who uh, you know wants to support us in the community, whenever you are testing it out, definitely reach back out to us. Again, Telegram is the best way to do it. Give us your honest feedback. The only way that we can get better is um, through this testing process. And, you know, you, you guys aren't rookies. You know what you're doing. Um, so it would be great to have that feedback. So thank you for testing it out. Veterans with the elbows in the mud, so to say. Yeah. Yes, sir. So there you go. You should be on stream with us right now. And we go to Internet Money IO. There you go. Got the wallet here. And we're going to acknowledge. And the biggest, one of the biggest things which I miss in a lot of wallets, which MetaMask has and Internet Money has, is the expand view options. So this is like one big thing for the wallet, which is a giant plus, because I hate. I hate to deal with this little pop-up and then you go away with the mouse and then you come back and it just vanishes. Oh, it's so annoying. And then you have to click. Yeah. Jesus. I don't it understand is. why why it's not a standard. And even in MetaMask, it's like you have to know that the option exists and you have to click it. And like here, you, you put it right there on the main screen. I love that. This, this option is oh, great. Yeah, in the early days, we didn't have that. And yes, it is very annoying. Um, it has to be built and programmed in just like everything mm -hmm. else. And it's just a matter of time, order of importance, things of that nature. So, yeah, we definitely have to have it. That was one of KG's big must-haves early on in the process. Yeah. Uh, so let's go uh, with the new to crypto version in the beginning. I'm going to approve. And then we got this cute little introduction uh, with uh, get ready. Our mission is to simplify the crypto space and make it more accessible. There will be plenty of resources available to help you during the way. And there is really a lot of resources. You go to the Telegram, you got the resources on the website. There is a bunch of YouTubes already, and this is just one more. But the Internet Money YouTube, if, you, if we go back actually to the website here, and Obviously, this is going to be broken. And I go here to the YouTube. And uh, we got here lots of explainer videos, short, quick, quirky, about the token itself, about the dividends, about the future token, about how it works, how to set it up, and so on. There are already a, a few videos, and there are other videos as well. And we got the, this is the internet money io youtube channel okay <laughs> done looking good says kg not as good as you man and afternoon ex academic created so yeah you got lots of information there lots of streams lots of youtubers covering it already it's just one more so we go, there is an understanding. Uh, feedback for this one, by the way, this frame does not scale to the window size, actually. If you could fix that, that would be amazing. So you don't have to scroll in this little guy here. Yeah, noted. Yeah. So we got a really good explanation uh, of the general seat information. Security is important. I like that. 
And we got a 24 seat word, which is also interesting because a lot of wallets do not give you a 24 seat word option. Most of them uh, will give you only 12 word seats. Theoretically, it's enough for, for, sec for security because it's 128, 128 bits of entropy. With the 24 seat words, you got double that, you got 256 entropy. Right. And even wallets like Trezor, they go in their newest model, they go back to 12 because they say, uh, if you if you're never entering your keys in the in the keyboard in in the PC itself, if you don't drop them, uh, you can get away with 12 and it's easier to manage. But I just prefer the 24 because it gives me that extra cushion whenever something happens. Because if you if you just have 12 words. Both words um, and they're jumbled anybody sees them they can still be brute force within like half an hour 20 minutes if you have 24 the 20 256 bits entropy is increasing so much that if you somehow have them encrypted and show them by mistake you still wouldn't lose your money but if you have a 12 word seed that you expose even if it's jumbled it can be brute forced like pretty fast within half an hour so I, yeah, I like that up, extra protection. Yeah, you bring up a really good point. Um, yes, you can get away with a 12-word 12, um, 12 C, but why if you don't have to? You know, it, Yes, it is annoying that if you have to enter your seed, you have to enter uh, 12 extra words, but it's a little more annoying if you have all your money stolen. So um, yeah, every, bit a big our, it's true. <laughs> every bit of our process, um, we've always taken, hey, what is a little more secure? Okay, let's do that. I, you know, so that's that's kind of our mantra here. And we know that there's a lot of security experts in our community. And we as a community are very security driven because when one person gets hacked, like we've seen with, uh, uh, if you guys remember, um, hex 19, hex 16, 19. Yeah. 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 That hurt, that hurt us all. I mean, there's a big dip and you know, no one likes to dip. Um, what's up, Al Samak. Good to see you. Uh, one of our trusted admins. So thank you. But yeah, so security is not just for you. It's for all of us combined as a community. We need to protect ourselves, but also each other in the process of protecting ourselves. So that's why we're very security centric. That's great. Uh, and there we go. Understanding the basics and you have to confirm, which is good. Someone's asking for your private key. Consider it a scam. First rule of crypto, not your keys, not your crypto. Yeah, very right. Got the introduction, and then we got the choice between password and passcode, actually. We got two choices. Uh, lots of wallets only do password, and some of them have ridiculous requirements for the password. So um, let's uh, let's go with the password. Uh, you only have the 10 characters, which is OK. So uh, it's it, not too annoying. Right, not too annoying, but also this is we're, we're, we're doing a lot of beta testing now. It's easy to scale it from 10 to 26, but at least setting up the process. And if people are beta testing with us, we don't want to make it that difficult to do. Like you can make mm -hmm. your passcode right now five zeros if you want. Uh, we understand it's not the best yeah. for security, but if you're testing, it's, it's easier just to, you know, hit five numbers in a row than every time you got to get in the wallet. Like, there's times that we touch the wallet maybe a couple hundred times a day. So, hmm. yeah, feedback for that. If if somebody wants to have a short password, be it for testing or be it actually only letters or only numbers, I would support that. By the way, uh, if a if a password is sufficiently long enough and it's uh, rocking the chair on the mountain instead of one two three four five, it's going to be way more secure than having something that you can forget and it's you're not going to remember uh, maybe in a year like. F capital six seven dash K Z thirteen twenty, but you're gonna remember your rock climbing little text that you enter, even if it's only letters. It's still gonna be more secure because it's gonna be a twenty six thirty um, uh, thirty letter long password, and it's still gonna be more secure. Yeah, so that's good. And yeah, then we nice. have the second option as well, the passcode. I also want to mention one thing too, Mr. Baum. Um, people don't realize, and I, we get this email often, if you forget your password, 
we can't help you reset it. We don't have any, they, all the data is stored locally on your device. So please remember your password, write your seeds down correctly, double check them before you put any assets in the wallet, do some dry runs because you are your own bank. You're, the own, you're your own uh, custodian. There's nothing we can do to help, right? You're on your own. So don't mess that up. And do backups. So yes, backups. backups. If you if you lose your password or your passcode, you can still recover your wallet and all your funds if you made a backup of your seed phrase. So you can always reintroduce that, restart the wallet. You yep. Bob's your uncle, you got all your money back. You can set up a new password. Uh, but if you don't have your seed words, if you didn't write them down, if you didn't stamp them, your money is gone. Yeah. Yep. Your your internet money is gone, <laughs> so to say. Yep. Uh, for now, we're just going to set up a quick password. I'm just going to be. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, and then one more. Yep. And let's create the wallet. Congratulations. Wallet successfully created. You are almost there. We know this can be overwhelming. Don't sweat it in the app. You will find plenty of resources to help you along the way. Very comforting. Very nice. And then the final reminder, scammers will try to steal your, your stuff. Never reveal this passphrase. Biggest advice you can get in crypto. Don't share it with your mom. Don't share it with your sister. Don't share it with your brother. Don't share it with your neighbor or whatever. Make sure that there is no window when you create that. Don't create it in a like weird pub or at Starbucks or whatever. Uh, do whatever you can to create this the wallets in a secure room. Maybe close the windows. Yeah, don't speak out the the phrase while talking to Google or your uh, I don't know your friends on Discord or whatever. Make sure only you know it. And in 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 the beginning, write it down on a piece of paper, ideally two times, and then later, ideally, you put it into metal and you burn that paper. Once you make sure that it's actually uh, the real uh, metal backup is able to recover your seat. Okay. Well said. For now, this is just a test wallet. Sorry, you were saying something? I just said, well said. I agree. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So for this, this is just a Testerino wallet. Doesn't matter. So we have this seat phrase here. Hello, 24 words. And wow, I cannot read that. Is that ill? I guess it's ill. <laughs> Gotta be a ill. Okay, so we will not store that because we don't need it. And then we get started. Hello, welcome to the wallet. This is the wallet. We got a little cool feature right off the bat, and which is the which, which was jetted just recently, I think today, the refresh button. So you can update everything whenever you need to. Get your account balance can add more accounts, remove accounts, you can hide balances, which is also one of the neat features which I like about this wallet, uh, meaning you can actually use this as a streamer wallet. So if you don't want to dox your stuff, uh, it's actually hiding it in, in the immediate, immediate view, but you have to watch out because when you do enter the account, it actually shows up again. So I wish that would, uh, that would be fixed, that it's still hi hidden here as well in the second yep. view uh and it then we come the, to on the list of things to do hmm. uh, one of the great things about this wallet it actually auto populates for pulse chain all the important tokens so we got pulse itself we got the hex token pulse x inc texan and some other coins hadron icosa b9 yeah there you go so now also uh, in future iterations we're going to clean this up a little bit uh, because it, as as the community grows it could be thousands of tokens and instead of having to remove each token that you don't want in there um we're gonna i believe in this next build is complete um you're gonna go to add token and then it'll come up in a separate list and you can scroll through them and then just click and have the um contract address already preloaded instead of having them all on your home screen so you can just click to add each one that you want to add in there instead of have to remove the ones that you don't mm -hmm. Can you can you actually remove the pre? Yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah. You can you can remove even even the ones that. Okay, so if you don't want them populated, you could theoretically remove all of them. Right, and as we grow, you know, some of these other coins are coming out. HOA, you know, PDI, Tropa, all these coins that people want or tokens, I should say. Instead of having them all preloaded on your home screen, you can just go in, choose them yourself. It'll it'll be a more clean uh, a cleaner user interface. And that's cool. And uh, we got the value, we got the copy, we got the usual send, receive, swap. And yeah, you got the pre select there as well. You can switch between PLS and USD. Got the slippage display, everything as you would expect it from a swap. Receive, we got the QR code. You can, uh, you can copy all the good jazz. And then, oh, there was one thing actually that I forgot to note during the um, during the creation. So, when you when you create the wallet, you actually you you're still missing the copy to clipboard button to to create to create a backup if you want to digitally save it instead of writing it down. Correct. Hey, hello, Ryan. Uh, but fear not. Once you created it, you actually can reveal it oh wait this is the account settings we want to go to all settings and then you can have here the seed phrase reveal seed phrase i'm just going to ask for the password and then we can have the copy to clipboard here so it's just missing in the uh, first part but it, it is available here so it's easy to do yeah go back back to wallet wallet arena uh, you got your obviously this is empty i'm not gonna load up any of my wallets <laughs> but it's gonna be uh, transactions and you can see everything filter by different types of transactions which is really nice it's clean and then we go to networks so right off the bat pulse chain mainnet is supported and it's the one of the first uh, pulse no it is the first pulse chain native uh, wallet uh, basically beating Richard Hart to his goal of creating a wallet so here, here we are <laughs> he was but kind we of also got all the time, say again he was kind of busy at the time so we figured we'd help the guy out you know step up yeah. you're welcome Richard let me know if uh, you so, want to talk today <laughs> so we got the if you're a minute all the good jazz everything Gnosis chain even here you go and you can also add your own network. So RPC settings, uh, input any EVM chain that you want, put in your blocking explorer, all the good things that you expect from any good wallet. If you have, a, if you're still using a wallet like, uh, what was it called, Trust Wallet that doesn't support RPC settings, switch. Do yourself a favor. Just, yeah. just stop. Just, just, just go to another wallet that supports it. You got your life going to be so much easier. Instead of having to deal with uh, with missing features that are crippling your life, yeah. Okay. Anyway, and you can also remove everything. Yes, 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 yes. That works. Okay. There we go. And then this is the time dividends option. So this is the actually. Let's go back to the website for that. I'll close that. Mm. there you go so we got the free tokens uh we got the time dividend time we got internet money i am and we got the future incoming maybe future time t t i m e uh, dividend uh, on ethereum airdrop thingy uh so maybe you want to talk about that oh Nobody can see it actually because I'm an idiot. Um, you mean talk uh, about the future or the actual dividend? Yes, token? one moment. I'm gonna bring us back to the normal view. So yeah, there you go. Now everybody can see. We right. got we got the time dividend. We got the internet money and the future time dividend. Maybe you want to talk about that real quick. Uh, starting with the sacrifice, how how that went. So the first sacrifice that was held back uh, March of 22, um, we sacrificed for the freedom 
of time because we believe that time is the most, um, obviously besides for water, uh, time is the most uh, important thing that we that we have. Um, can't make any more of it. And whatever we're allocated by the powers that be, that's all we have. So in the process of valuing that, we as individuals would want to do what we want to do with our time, not the token, but more so the esoteric sense. I, you know, who wants to punch in every day and work at a job that they don't absolutely love? You know, we want to be free. So what we did was in the wallet, you know, the wallet has fees, uh, 0.729%, which is less than MetaMask and less than Trust Wallet. And for what we know, um, it's the least, has the least amount of fees when it comes to swaps than any other wallet out there. But uh, 100% of those fees go to the holders of time. And during the first sacrifice, uh, you were able to um, receive points that turned into time uh, once we launched it. And we launched about five months ago um, on Ethereum uh, and Binance. But then we launched on uh, Pulse Chain, you know, a little while after Pulse Chain launched. Yeah. And my favorite part of that is the buy and burn actually because oh yeah you, you participate yeah you you got an active buy and burn act token so that increases to, the value over time <laughs> right so if you go to app.internetmoney.io um you can see that um time is deposited into a smart contract um, you can scroll down all the way to the bottom. You'll see how much is, is in there. Well, not all the way. Sorry. A little up right there is about 20 something million time locked in this contract where again, time holding it. You don't have to lock it up. You don't have to stake it. You just hold it liquid and it earns you uh, the fees. And again, the fees are paid in the native coin, not in the, the token that you're swapping out of. So that uh, native coin goes to a smart contract will go to the swap router. And then when you, when you hit sweep, uh, it sends the tokens from the swap router into the time dividend contract. Now there is some time locked up in this contract. And what it does is it buys and burns time off the open market. We came out with a total of 2 billion on the first shot and a hundred percent of the fees is represented by those 2 billion tokens. As we burn time, and as you can see, there's 118,000 time burnt, the remaining- Yeah, I'm yep. gonna enhance a little bit so people can see it. Perfect. Yep. The remaining the dividends yes. yep, get amplified. So if half of the supply gets burnt, that means your share of the pool doubles. So it's a really unique feature. And actually the security audit, we had a security audit and an economic audit because an economic audit is different than a security audit. An economic audit says, hey, what are you trying to do with this token? And then they make sure that it does exactly what you think it does. So during that economic audit, the auditors actually said, this is a very unique contract, the first of its kind. There's nothing else that exists mm -hmm. out there like that. And we invented it and we're very proud of that. Um, so yeah, yeah. and awesome. actually for anybody interested, the audits are here on the website at the top. If you go there. Uh, oh. There you go, audits at the top. And then you got all of them here if you want to look at them. Internet money ecosystem audits. Yeah, and I see that comment by a uh, uh, tranny transhumanist. I, I would call you Mr. Transhumanist, but you know I'll just be politically correct to call you by your name. Um, it's a pity. Because <laughs> she, she, Shiva Inu.io. You're 100% right, though. The whole point of this wallet was to um, onboard new users into crypto through Pulse Chain. That's why having the RPCs preloaded, having the token addresses preloaded. I mean, obviously, we need to upgrade with the uh, fiat on ramp, but. Yeah, man, it's uh, it is the simplest way to get onto Pulse Chain. There is no other easier way to do it as of now. Right now, it's even if you had to change your network, 
that's a step that you don't have to take with the internet money io wallet and let's go back to the other view actually so it's a little bit bigger and then we go back to the wallet itself so you have the sweep dividends and the claim dividends uh, buttons in there as well just like on the website which is right. the app yeah, yeah. and that's and, you know well, that, and that goes back to the freedom of time um you know if the value proposition is not hey buy the token let's pump the price the value proposition is just use the wallet do your swaps within the wallet and everything else takes care of itself even if the price of time was zero you're still going to be earning native coin pulse and if you hold time on ethereum eth and bnb um so that, that's the whole idea of it if you're not earning money while you sleep it's going to be a long life for you so this is why we created this and um, again, the value prop is getting people to use the wallet and then everything else takes care of itself. And plus the buy and burn is not just for time. It's also for internet money and for Hex. Hex does get bought and burnt. And that's also on the drop down on that buy and burn. You'll see that there too. And Pepe, yep. because Pepe was pretty popular and we can add more contracts in the future uh, for that. You know, there wasn't that much uh, Hex that's been burnt, but you know. There's been some claims. Well, if you go to, um, yeah, someone actually has to physically go click buy and burn. Well, there, there's some, man. So 933. It's not a lot, but there may not be a lot of. Oh, yeah, now it's loading. Yeah. There may not be a lot of heck or time in that hex contract. Um, and it's actually not burnt. It's just sent to the debt address, which also allows the APY to stay up because it's still based on that, but it, it's, it can never be touched. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, all the assets you love can get burnt just by swapping in the wallet and it all takes care of itself. Yeah. And it's just the beginning. So we are on the ground floor the, with this wallet. Like it's it's all in the beginning. Uh, this is going to go up over time with use. Uh, we got all the health links that you could need. You got explanations. We got videos. Got some articles here if you are... Uh, very into impermanent loss and trading and all the the good stuff and then we also got a few settings here so you got the normal as you can see we're still in beta here 1.085 it is with the latest updates from today you can select languages uh, and the usual stuff like change password have your seed phrase what we had earlier send logs and error reports this is the general one and then there is also the feedback where was that uh, their feature request and submit a bug and contact us so this is what we talked about earlier where you need to leave your email if you actually want to reply to that because otherwise you won't be able to get feedback for whatever you you said it's like you can write everything in here don't paste don't paste your seed phrase here people Oof. make sure that when you copy paste stuff that you don't accidentally still have very sensitive data in there. Always uh, clear the copy paste by copying something else. Yeah. So feature request and then the usual terms and condition and the privacy policy, which we don't need to look at right now. Yeah, that's it. That's a clean, nice wallet. Uh, and yeah. The biggest point again is you are basically early for this wallet and you can enact change. You're going into a community and you can participate in the ecosystem of the wallet itself with the buy and burn and the um, the future token and the time token. Yeah, which is a big plus because all the other tokens, uh, all the other airdrops, whatever, whatever they are, they usually don't give you that so there is always some company that's raking in all the fees and it's hoarding them for themselves and there is trading and losses and oh all the horrible stuff but here it's just from the people for the people so i like that aspect it's a really big thing yeah you touched on a great point um you know you never have to sell the time to to benefit from the actual use case of it Again, it's just getting people to swap in the wallet, and let your PLS stack up. You know, you know, if you're trading for every dollar or for every hundred dollars you're swapping, it's going to be seven cents, seven point 
two nine cents um, that goes towards this contract. And it, it's not just to, you know, of course, you know, we, the founders own some, but during the first sacrifice, something like 75% went to the community. And, you know, just like me, if I'm earning PLS, I'm not going to just take it out and go buy a couch one day. It's going to probably go into other assets into the community and just continue to, you know, uh, wash it. That's, well, that's not maybe a bad, a good, a good term when it comes to money. More so, um, recycle it. That's the better word. Um, you know, you you buy other tokens within the ecosystem. You know, when they when they come out, because we're just like you. You know, we we're in this community. We 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 trade. We love it. We're interactive. So, um, it's very unlikely that a lot of this pulse is just going to leave the system. It's more so it's going to stay within uh, the system in the community continuing to be recycled and uh, all having fun in the process. And at the end of the day, if you're not having fun, you don't like what you do, you're doing the wrong thing. And I think we're all here because especially in the, in the belly of the bear, um, because we love it. And I like that belly of the bear. Yeah. We <laughs> love this man. And that's what it's all about. By the dip, the bear, yep. by the, by the bear dip. Yeah. <laughs> and if you look at time, one more thing about time, and then I'll uh, stop talking so much. Um, for me, you know, I've been an investor for a couple of decades now, in legacy and, you know, crypto later, but it was always important to me to know what the bottom is and what the floor is. And if you look at the chart, sure, you know, the, the wicks are cool, but where the floor actually starts to stabilize and you know that it's very unlikely unless a block, a black swan event happens, that it's going to break that and go downwards. So if you look at the time chart, you'll see a, a, an insane floor just being just built and stable. And again, not yep. financial advice. It's, to your it's own not, I, I can't bring it up. I, I want to focus on the wallets, not on trading on this channel, but I've sure. seen that it has high, higher lows uh, all the time Yeah, Cur currently. So far with the current chart, it's higher, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. Yeah. Yep. So thank you, Mr. Baum, for uh, allowing... Uh, us to be on and uh your review of the wallet is very important and your uh contributions to the community so thank you yeah cheers thank you uh one last thing did i forget anything maybe i missed some cool feature or something would you like to point out anything on the wallet something that i maybe forgot um make sure that i covered everything i th i think it's I, I think you 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 touched on all of the you know major features again this is v1 or beta going into V1. Beta, so, we, yeah. so we want to make whatever we have work and clean and safe. And then, you know, we have a list on our backlog of 175 plus new features and things that we want to put in. Um, but for now, it's just the basics that, that we're, you know, pushing out. That is true, Al Samak, and we did touch on that. Yep. No. Okay. Well, then. Thank you very much for coming on. I'm going to yep. move on to the next wallet and see you another time. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bye-bye. Oh, wait. Uh, socials. Let, let's, uh, let, let, let's see where people can find you just in case. Uh, everything is Internet Money IO, Telegram, uh, X, which is Twitter, um, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, we dropped the Telegram earlier. And I'm going to drop the website one more time just in case. If you ever have trouble finding it, it's uh, at Internet Money or internetmoney.io is the web address. And um, everything else is Internet Money IO at Brother uh, KDG or KG at Brother KG on Twitter, uh, at Don Montoya 818 on Twitter. Uh, follow me, I'll follow you back. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys out there. Okay. Cheers. Thank Bye. you again, Mr. Bob. Appreciate it. Okay, and now we're going over to the next wallet. This was cool. Somebody from the community coming on, to, uh, able to do live review here with us. And we're moving on to the Aurox wallet now. <clears throat> this one is also semi community driven and a big proponent of, oh wait, uh, let me fix the view actually before we move on. Well, well, well. Um, 
going to go on the big view and we're going to go with this. So make sure that you always visit the correct websites. It's uh, at aurox.com wallet. It's not aurox.com. Make sure you write it correctly. Please fade the scams. Make sure that you always double, triple check. Do not enter this into the Google search because hackers will sometimes, when you search for for any type of MetaMask, wallets, uh, anything with crypto, they will add a fake sponsored ad on the top, which looks like the real website, but then it's a phishing website. You enter your keys there and money gone, okay? Crypto gone. <clears throat> Not yours anymore. So watch out for that. Let's go to getorox.com on the main website. And there is a big proton proponent for that one that I know as well in the pushing community, which is uh, Randy Hilarski. He is, he's been working with Oryx for some time. If you want even more detailed information and streams and uh, background info, go to check out his channel. Uh, let me actually drop that as well. Go to Randy Hilarski. Whoop. Yeah, hello everybody, he says. There you go. Look at that. It's, it's YouTube here. Randy Hilaski one, that is. And he and he's also doing also doing like wallet review. He's explaining the the wallet, he's covering it, he's using it extensively and so on. Yeah. So I'll go back to the website. Let's see, what is Oryx Wallet? Oryx Wallet. Well, basically it's a wallet like any, any other, but it has really cool additional features that not uh, all wallets have. And it's uh, kind of developed in unison with their trading platform. So there is two products that they have. They have this terminal and they have the, this is, let's enhance products. They have the terminal and they have the wallet. And as you can see, it's uh, focused on trading stay away from trading people <clears throat> i am not advertising for trading but this is the the wallet that they have and then the oryx they have this um, the wallet here and the trading terminal which is incorporated with that so you have direct access to all the charts all the data it's uh, shiny it's uh, easy to use it's um, connecting very well with your wallet so it's, this one has already been in development for much longer than internet money. And it's just, uh, it has more features, so to say. Uh, we got the Oryx protocol. Our protocol encompasses multiple contracts and system working in unison for accessible, accessible decentralized finance to all. And you will see them a little bit more down. Uh, where was it? This is the platform. Let's make it bigger again. And then features yeah backend simplifying trading uh, they're using stuff like gasless uh, uh gasless stuff and so on and then they also got a token which has so 25 percent. it doesn't say here but 25 percent seems to be the allocation for the team then there is some um, for uniswap listing exchange listing reserve uh protocol rewards is red was at 10 percent, and then uh, company reserves so more of the token is locked for use but with it you get like gas rebates you unlock the power of the terminal which uh, and you get the Oryx wallet rewards there's like a, a little gamification in the wallet if you're interested in that kind of thing where you basically in the olden times when you wanted to be part of an airdrop or be part of an ecosystem you had to have some kind of metric on the blockchain and this wallet, instead of doing the Uniswap approach where they're like just checking, oh, did you do a Uniswap trade on this wallet? And then people started to farm and try to, to get those airdrops um, uh, by making transactions, swapping like one cent or whatever. And then the wallets try to rein that in and try to make find more and more metrics to deliver the airdrops to the real people so it cannot be dumped and this one is like doing real gamification inside you have to swap it and we'll see that too there is like point system for wallet creation for swapping for uh, 
uh, transacting a specific dollar amount and so on. So you can you can do all that stuff to go up in the ranks and then earn those wallet rewards. Yeah, well, let's go to the installation, go to wallet. And then you see, we got it uh, for Chrome right now and it's coming soon for Apple. It's not ready yet. You can see this is somewhat looking like uh, for, it's set up to be for a mobile phone as well. And then we got Chico Crypto and Satoshi Stecker uh, advertising for it again as well. And yeah, there's discords, we got NFT avatars. This is the gamification system where you can rank up. And this one is rank black with 128,000 points. Well, I see it's like rank seven, then it goes higher and higher. And then the more, the higher you go, the more rewards there are and so on. And then this is the important part. So this, this wallet has special security features. Uh, this one is not active yet, but it's coming soon. I'm actually not sure this is a good thing. Uh, it's similar to the ledger thing. Like, do you really want to have recovery for your seats? I'm at. I'm more of an advocate for uh, not your keys, not your coins. So you should do your own backup and you should never send it out into the ether on the internet, uh, even if it's encrypted or something like I, I would steer away from that. But they have that as an option for people that do want to use it. Uh, we got the transaction simulation. Let's zoom in a little bit on that. Uh, meaning you can try out and this is only a feature for a specific change, though. Uh, you got the simulation of a Uniswap purchase, for example, you connect to Uniswap, you check out uh, a new coin, you click the simulation, and then it will tell you what actually happens when you click buy. So this is going to give you a scam protection, basically, what is going to happen on this on a particular website, are you going to lose all your money, it's like, what are you going to receive a fake token back, whatever it is, it's, it's supposed to be covering that, but it's not available on all chains yet. And then we got the advanced phishing protection, which is also basically a whitelist, blacklist kind of thing where known phishing scams are added to. And they are doing the, the background work basically for that. And we got the smart contract monitoring, monitoring tracks and monitors all the prominent DeFi protocols and wants if your smart contract is potentially dangerous. So uh, meaning if you interact with a honeypot, a fake bridge of some kind, Anything that steals your money and just is going to leave you in the dust. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got the Certic audit. Uh, yeah. Audits are nice. We're not going to go over them. If you're interested, go check it out. And I already posted the website. Oh, yeah. And we got the true gasless swapping. I'm not sure about the true, though, because there is a caveat to that. So they, they say it's true gasless swapping. Uh, but it's, it's still using gas. It's just not using Ethereum for gas. You can use the token that you're swapping and that you're selling. So let's say you have, I don't know, ch chain link. No, no, wait, that's a bad example. Uh, let's say, oh, wow. Well, I'm stumped. What is a, what is a good coin? Uh, let, let's say you have hacks, you have hacks on on Ethereum, you want to swap that and you don't have any other Ethereum for gas in your in your wallet, then the gasless swap would sell some of that Ethereum within the same, uh, some of that hacks within the same transaction, give you enough fees, give you enough fees to cover, give you enough gas to cover the fees, and then you are able to finish that transaction, do the swap and receive, for example, Tether back or more Ethereum back, whatever, whatever it is you're swapping for. Yeah, so it's still, you still have to pay the, the gas fee, but you don't have to have gas in your wallet to do that. So it's that's why it's called gasless. Cross-chain swapping, the terminal and so on. We discussed all that. We got the team and then let's install the wallet and see how it looks. So I go. There we go. Set it up. 
gonna edit the Chrome, add extension. And again, it's uh, read and change all your data on all websites. Has to, installation is running. Should be popping up monetary. And um, actually I'm in the wrong mode because I have to remove this one moment. I'm gonna go this, I'm gonna go big screen. And uh, we're gonna give you the cool view. Actually, let's remove it again. Sorry, this is this is a little bit junky because because it just won't display on the normal the normal streamyard chair. So I have to do this weird workaround here. Okay, here you go. I go again. So I got the Google Chrome. I got the extension. I'm gonna add it to Chrome. Now we have the pop up, and now it should show up here. Yeah, now we have it. So we got the introduction here. And the very first thing that pops up is this little nice uh, gadget that shows you how to deal as a new user with the Chrome browser. But we already know that, so we're going to pin it. So we have the Orox wallet here. There you go. And we got this cool background. We scroll down. And we got all the information about the wallet security. And we got two options. Uh, I don't like, by the way, that it's so black and it's so small. Oh, let me zoom in a little bit so you see it better. But yeah, we got the basic two options, new wallet or existing wallet. And they're going to do the 12 word seed. If you want to import it, uh, you paste it in here. And then we also have an additional feature, which is create an ENS username. You have to select the name, by the way. It's not optional. I'm going to create a new wallet here. And let's call this Baum Random Test One Two Three. No, it's not going to cost you anything, so it doesn't really matter. But you have to select it. There is no way to skip that. It's just a bit weird. And there you go. You select your password. This one has a difficult password system: minimum eight characters, uppercase and lowercase characters, minimum one number. Passwords must match, obviously. But <sighs> Usually, it's such a pain to have these standards. I'm going to select just a random password for now. And it would be much better if they would allow to just have a longer password and not have the silly upper lowercase stuff that's so easy to forget as a human, as a normal human. There we go. We got our no wallet with start. Oh, start fork echo used salt rock. Oh, that's a nice one. Rock angle spot hamster domain reopen best. We got the copy to clipboard. Very nice. I understand if I lose my recovery phrase, there's no way to recover my wallet. Very pretty, pretty standard, but you got only 12. So I have to deal with that. Uh, you, by the way, side note, you shouldn't be creating any of those or using any of those wallets anyway, because uh, you should be, you should be uni, you should be running with uh, hardware wallet Torinos, right? And then be using, oh, oh, that's what I forgot, actually. Oh, that's what I forgot on the internet money wallet, actually. Let me go back on that. Oh my god, oh my god. Uh, wallet, add account. Obviously, there is a connect hardware wallet option here where where you can add your, come on, let me connect. And there you got Trezor, for example. So we go, we load it up. There is the Trezor app popping up. <clears throat> we got the Confirmation buttons. We don't want to create a backup. This is just a test wallet and export. And then we go standard wallet. Just so you see that there is actually hardware wallet support. And there you go. We got the 
99 address and we can connect accounts. There we go. It's all in there. Look at that. We got a Trezor account hardware wallet in the internet money wallet. So hardware wallet support, great stuff. Close that and we go back to Orox wallet. Uh, keep it secure. Oh, yeah, I have to confirm that. Uno momento, por favor. Uh, this is sometimes annoying on some wallets to do, but it's good that they ask you to make sure that you actually wrote it down or saved it somewhere. Salt rock angle spot hamster domain reopen best and just just in case never use this passphrase this is now compromised this is just an example it's a stupid test don't use this you will create your own wallet your own seed phrase good to complete and then we got a very sophisticated information and introduction we got videos for everything how it's used connecting to the app submitting the app transactions <clears throat> off-chain dApp transactions and so on all the good stuff obviously all wallets can connect to to the apps there's just different ways of doing it so uh we can we're gonna skip that but it's really nice to have for somebody who's completely new if you advance you don't you don't really need that and then we go so there you go this is the wallet this is how it pops up it's a uh, dark skin and the worst thing about it is you cannot have it in a big view so you're you're limited to this little tiny window here everything is done in here and the moment you move your mouse away and move back in ah it's gone oh my god so there's no expanding view on this one unfortunately well mow 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 but, 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 we got a cool little overview. We got the gas indicator here. This is usually where you would see your total balance of um, of your wallet. We got the options with all the good jazz uh, notifications. We got the auto sort balance chain, display percentage of tokens on Twitter, and some, some like little features for if you trade a lot, they, they are obviously pushing you to, to share your data and so on. And, show stuff we got the gas presets which are interesting where you can immediately select oh yeah i always want to go medium with those settings and so on enable on off high um yeah you have this presets similar to metamask but this one is just uh, in advance for all of them instead of just one and you got them for all different change that you activate and then we got the normal change pass change password and we got the security so this is what i was talking earlier about it's uh, all these anti phishing domain checker and the simulation smart contract monitoring if you do not want to use this feature you can just switch them off so they don't uh, um, they don't pester you while you you maybe you're doing like 20 transactions and it's all on the one website that you know it's going to it's safe and secure you have like this one uniswap website that you use you don't need the simulation because you know it's always gonna be a specific thing you're only buying like five tokens you, you don't need the simulation you can turn it off yeah it's good that it's optional uh we got the obvious uh, show recovery with the password uh was it? i already forgot my password what's this my password yeah you got continue in four seconds nice warning advice that nobody can sh can see it yeah, and then there you go. That's what we entered earlier. It's all good. You can make an additional recovery. And networks. So this one is interesting because uh, if you see the 
networks that are already enabled by default, Avalanche, Binance, Ethereum, and Polygon, they are marked as feature-rich. That means that they have additional options that other networks do not have. And those are the like anti-phishing stuff, the additional swap features, the, the terminal and so on, all, all, the, all the additional ring, rings and bells. They are only for those. But the moment you add another network, so there is a bunch of them to choose from already prepared, all the Arbitrum, Bidget, Callisto, some stuff that I've never heard of, but yeah, Dogecoin, Kronos, Phantom on there, Filecoin, Gnosis, oh, Gnosis Network, nice. Uh, and we got Pulse Chain, look at that, looky, looky, Pulse Chain is in here with the custom RPC enabled the standard supported network. And this is the, the difference from feature rich to the standard support network. It's just not everything is activated. So, but yeah, you can see, and we also have the options to change them if we wanted to. So there you go. I'm gonna leave it as it is. Uh, it's gonna use the standard IPC and it's the scan. We're gonna change that to Otter because scandal push is still indexing. So if we wanted to do that, we have that, and then it's going to open all the transactions uh, that we open straight from a wallet. It's going to open them in the other network, in the other scanner, which is nice. We've got a reset wallet similar to activity deletion in MetaMask. You, if you have a structured transaction, some pending, some kind of cash issue, you can just reset your wallet. You enter your password, you click confirm, and then it removes all the all the data from the app about it's just some general information all the links to the website the twitter and so on all the good jazz yeah pretty standard pretty good and then we got here the home this is the home screen and as you can see again it is pretty much uh tailored to traders because it has in here it has the display of the to coins and tokens that you have so it's probably pulling it from the terminal data. So if you are <clears throat> very much a uh, trader, if you want to lose money, I guess, uh, you're going uh, you're gonna to be able to just see straight here from this little window instead of having to go uh, to some other website to load it. And this is mostly for people that are on, on the run. So if you have it on your phone, on your mobile phone, this might be very handy that you have the, the data in within the app, you can access it, you can straight trade it. But hear me out, Degen all you want, do it, but please do it with a condom wallet. Like when, when, you, cr when you create any of these wallets on a trading wallet, like uh, any of the addresses on a trading wallet like this, do not put your seed phrase into it. That's your main storage, cold storage, your, uh, your big cha cha change address or something. Put in a small wallet that you have some trading funds on or stuff that you want to test things out so that if something goes haywire, if there is some kind of stupid malware on, on your phone or whatever, that you do not lose everything, but you only lose the funds that you allocated to this one one wallet just to test things out or to, to dip your toes into the water just a little bit. Yeah, so stay safe, people. Then we got an overview over your transactions and uh, we'll show up all, all the coins, all the data. We got the internal swap function, send and receive obviously, but also the swap as you saw earlier when, when I did the overview, it allows you to, this is what is collecting fees as well for the system and so on. Basically the same as Uniswap or the MetaMask swap. It's um, in, internal in the app immediately so you can just snap go into it and swap whatever you want <clears throat> uh, but send receive is pretty standard you got your uh, qr code you can copy it, the address it's also this is nice that you can see the full address because some wallets don't show you actually the full address which is uh, pretty shitty i hate it that in uh, in metamask you can you can never see the full thing it's very good for verification if you're new to crypto and you want to verify your your address it's it's easier to do it like that way but you should be using a hardware wallet anyway you got the pro view which is their additional like uh, reward stuff and uh, this is then opening on, on on the website with more information 
Uh, I think some of them unlocks only if you if you have additional things unlocked in, in the gamification. Okay, let's go back in, into the wallet. Thank you. And then we got the gamification part, which I was talking about earlier. So there you go. Level one is like 2,000 points. You create the wallets and you get different points. Daily entry. So again, trading, you, you come back every day to, to lock into your wallet to check on things instead of just um, buying and then holding. Uh, you got the execute and a wallet swap, send NFT, gives you token to uh, points and so on. Yeah. And then on the website, it, it all explains it in detail if you're interested in that and that kind of stuff. There's some things that you, you can get in the end. And then you get like bonuses here, VIP rewards. Uh, Aurox token module, hold Aurox token. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. Anyway, that's the gamification part. And then let's go to account. And this is the account overview for this one. This is the base account that we created with the original seed, but you can also add more. Create new wallet. You can import wallet and link hardware wallet. We're going to try that out. As you can see, it's all the same time, all the same good jazz, ledger and treasure. I'm going to try add the treasure. Same as before. Is it on? Yep. And we go allow for this session. We don't want to back up. I'm going to export and see standard wallet. Pretty easy. And you have all the different explorers where you go. BD99 can also import more. Check out if you already have imported. And you can also choose the path, which is very nice. You can have the ledger life path, um, derivation path. You get the ledger C, M, M, E, W, my crypto, and the standard BIP44, uh, the Bitcoin improvement proposal for the standardized wallet derivation path. Can load more if you want. So I'm going to give you five more, just like in MetaMask. There you go. First 10 addresses. And you can import. Let's see. And, oh, it's closing. Oh, I hate this so much. Please, please, wallet manufacturers, expand view. Expand view. Users need this on desktop PCs. There you go. Trezor account one is important. So nice hardware support works. So let's see. Did I cover everything? Uh, current gas prices, domain checker. Oh yeah, there is a referral program actually, uh, where you also participate in the fees that are collected. So that's a nice thing. If you got like a big community, I guess it's worth it. Or if you got lots of friends and then you, you're trading anyway, you're onboarding them. So you, you gonna get, uh, I think it's lifetime, but don't quote me on that. So if, you, if you're big into referral programs, maybe that's the thing for you. Uh, one caveat though is that this wallet here, when you try to connect to dApps, you actually have to use it in a separate browser. So I just installed it here right now because it's, it's only for a test, but it will bite itself with MetaMask. So Whenever you whenever you want to connect to to a DApp, it will actually prioritize MetaMask first, and therefore just create a new Chrome profile, put it in there, name it. You should separate it anyway, because it's just better practice. So you have a Chrome for profile only for your crypto first of all, and then only for the one wallet, because this way you don't have cross com contamination and you don't break things you you don't surf on it you don't visit weird junky websites you don't visit scam websites uh, via this profile and you keep it secure nice and tight yeah uh, i think that's it for the Aurox wallets i hope i didn't forget anything uh, you got more docs github uh, connection 
Uh, just double checking that I didn't forget anything. Let's look for what. Again, I got the transactions. Yeah. Um, covered the security features earlier. Let me go back to those actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we covered those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we covered those extensively. And then here you get an overview of the chart. Actually, I didn't cover that earlier. So yeah, you have the chart, line chart, one day, one week, all for all your assets, all your um, all your displays. It's gonna load all of them. Yeah, very nice. Any questions by any chance in the chat? Feel free to ask. Otherwise, we're going to move on to the last one, which is Raby, 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 Raby Wallet. Let me go to Raby. Another blue white hair. We've got the Raby Wallet. And we got it for desktop and also for mobile soon. Stay tuned, they say. Desktop, beta version. We got it for macOS, Intel, and Windows. Discord, uh, but we're just gonna install the Chrome version in a second here. So, yeah, it's white website, we've got multi chain support, send token. Yeah. Uh, can you actually see the left side? Oh. Let me move that over a little bit. Now we're cooking. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, they are prioritizing security. So we go. We got the the audits open sourced and audited by the uh, by the professional security company. Got all that good jazz. You can look them up if you want to. And we got the integrations of lots and lots and lots of chains. And as you can see, there is also polls in there, which is very nice. We get the polls. So you don't have to set up an RPC. We got all the dark chains. Uh, do they have Gnosis? G, 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 G. Ethereum, F. Yeah, Gnosis chain. There you go. Look at that. Got the evil owl. Even Shibarium. Wow. Shibarium. Okay. The SDK Sync, Optimism, yeah, okay, see, wow, all the good chess. And even some test nets, wow. I don't think they have Pulse Chain test net. Mm, no, they don't, but you can add that uh, yourself if you wanted to. And multi signing nodes, we got all the hardware wallets, multiple hardware wallet support, by the way. So Bitcoiners, uh, Keystone. We got one key, we got cool wallet, air gap wallet, grid. Uh, it's not just ledger and trezor, bitbox zero two. So if you got one of those, you might want to use this wallet. We got institutional wallets and we got all the mobile wallet networking. So because this wallet can connect to multiple things and just copy, copy paste stuff and uh, interact. And there, there is a big ecosystem that, uh, that they're building out for that. As you can see, shiny website, let's install it. Download for Chrome. Uh, it's the original one, obviously, because from the website. And we go install it. It's going to take a while, pop up, and go away. But we're going to pin it. Oh, wait. Rabbi Wallet. There you go. We pin it, move it over. We open it and then we got immediately some information. Raby connects to all dApps that MetaMask supports, which has a really cool feature because you can actually flip in between MetaMask and Raby and have both installed at the same time. And Mani says, I like that Bitbox is supported by Raby. Yep. Ah, but this is not supported by Raby. Again, it's like this freaking pop-up here and you have to constantly click into it. It's it's a weird one. Ra Raby has like a dual 
system some of the some of the pop-ups do open in expanded view but most of the wallet functions are actually limited to this little pop-up window and whenever you leave the window it's just it's just going away so the, whenever i move, move the mouse out it's vanishing so self-custodial private keys are stored locally with sole access to you it's pretty basic and then it immediately drops you in so this is one of the reasons why i wouldn't recommend this wallet actually to a new person uh, some some this is more like for advanced users if you have somebody who's just starting out with crypto i would rather push him to internetmoney.io or to metamask because those those are explaining the pitfalls they're explaining you how to use it and for especially for metamask there is lots and lots of um support in in the sense that there is information out there um watch out there is no real no real way to contact any support or something um if somebody is contacting you on on telegram or something it's always a scam about metamask or all the scammers that uh reply to you on twitter and say like hey i had you have this problem i'm gonna help you out it's always a scam mind you that so for, for new users it's it's rather safe to use one wallet that like eases you into the whole process and then once you're a little bit advanced you can move into something that is more uh trader focused like the aurox wallet or in in this case just has more features and allows you to play around more and just drops you in so uh this one has a lot of features right off the bat and i like this system by the way because it you don't have to create a seed phrase in most other wallets you're forced to create this dummy wallet before you can import the public keys from your hardware wallet but this one uh, the rabbit wallet it gives you the option straight away connect hardware wallets and then bam, bam there you there you go you can just select trezor and you select your password and so on like actually let's go back i don't want to do that right now uh, uh so if you're new you're you're obviously gonna create a new seed phrase we're gonna do that just for now as the minimum let's see here minimum eight characters yeah minimum eight characters but that's fine it's easy to do then it's gonna go with you through these uh, little setup uh, information thingies create a new seed phrase if you lose your seed phrase my assets will be lost forever share my seed phrase without my asset will be stolen the seed phrase is only stored on my computer and Rebby has no access to it uh, if i install Rebby without backing up the seed phrase Rebby cannot retrieve it for me so all the standard ones but they still do it okay then we got to backup seed phrase and then neglect some of the words I, I love them to have like some of the words <laughs> neglect tomato hoodie famous rare critic border welcome we can copy the seed phrase right out of the app as well which is nice uh, i just say i saved the passphrase and then you can select what address you're gonna import so you just select the one you have. And if you imported one that has already uh, that has already funds on it, you would actually be able to see it because it scans uh, really nice. It scans all the addresses that you display and then it checks, are there any assets on it? So obviously this is a new wallet, so it doesn't have anything. But if you were to import something, it would populate here and you would see, ah, yeah, okay, I got my... I uh, know I got my Doge, Harry Potter, whatever ERC20 token. I got that here. So I'm going to import just my number six address or this is my trading account. I'm going to in, 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 introduce it to my Rebby wallet. I only want my trading account, something like that. And then you don't need to meddle with all the other addresses. So we're just going to Im import the seed phrase one. Doesn't really matter. Ah, and then it closes great stuff so this is what i was talking about it, it just has this it is in the expanded view but then once you're out of out of the option you, it it pops back to just this tiny window and you have you can only deal with that so you can go back and reopen it but it's it's not not you can't do anything in it anymore 
No, it's just rabbit.io. So I don't go back to the dark skin anymore. <clears throat> and there we go. You got imported. So you can actually op go back to the initial screen here on the top right and then import others. So it again opens up this new expanded view, but it closes the. It's a little bit shitty. I don't know why they programmed it like this. And then you can select 12, 15, 18, 21, 24 words. Oh, let's say we want 24 words, and then it expands. You can input here your any pass right, any seat that you had before. And Kinko Hugh has, says Rabi is my favorite wallet. Yeah, for for advanced users, I see a lot of people switching to it. Actually, I'm just so annoyed that it doesn't have the expand view. Uh, option, but <laughs> and pe people, I, I checked it out on Twitter if there is some kind of development about that, and pe people are joking about it. It's like, ah, uh, it's a uh, Rabby wallet is a scam if it doesn't have expand view option and so on. It's, it's people are memeing it, but yeah, this it's it's really missing. It, it's great, but gotta have that expand view option on desktop, otherwise, it feels kind of wor worthless. So, you, you can import. Your seed phrase, obviously, I'm going to close that, go back, normal pop-up view here. And then I'm going to add the hardware wallet because we want to check that it works. Where you go, Trezor, again, it's going to go to the connect Trezor, which is the Trezor bridge. I'm going to allow it for this session. And we have the public key for account one, export. Standard wallet. And there you go, it's the same. It's the D99. We can add the Trezor one. You can also actually change the name. I wanted to call it Trezor Cool Wallet One. So name it whatever you want. Again, if you had funds, it would show up what kind of coins, uh, what the balance is on, on that account, and so on. And then it closes again. Oh, it's so annoying. Okay, but the design is nice in general. Uh, we have the connection wallets, we have the institutional wallets. You can even have uh, contacts uh, if you want to just watch an address. Let's say you have this big whale that you are monitoring and you just want to add his address, you can do so here. And uh, I don't know, I don't have an address ready, but you could like say, ah, I want. I want to see his every move, and then you have it in here. It will, it will populate the data. And there is also the cool import my MetaMask account, which is more like a help option. It's not really importing it for you, because you'd have to read it out, but it tells you how to do it, basically. And with steps like, hey, here you go, export your seed phrase or private key, then import the seed into Rabi, and it goes through you with the steps. Import is completed, and all your assets will appear automatically. So it's just it's just helping you along with the process, which is nice. Uh, Manny says you could use the desktop version, no tiny window, which closes all. The <laughs> yeah, but ah, do I really want to install another program? I I really would like to have everything actually in one browser. That would be really really nice. But it, it's but it's a good workaround, I guess. Yeah to use the desktop version. The question is, uh, can the desktop version, I guess it has Pulse Chain, so I, mm, yeah, it would probably be OK to use the desktop version. And then money, also that's a browser issue. Nothing the extension can do about it if, if fake. Yeah, but they can. I mean, obviously, they have the expanded view. They should be able to program that in. I mean, MetaMask has it, and Internet Money has it. Rabby wallet should also have it at least be able to do it i'm i reckon they will do it at some point in in the future so we got the wallet covered we got the wallet overview which is really nice you can see all, all the asset the qr code uh, you can copy the address you see the full address here you can rename it you got the hd path uh, information and you can back up your seed phrase and back up the private key as well. Well, if you wanted to for that specific address. For the Trezor, uh, obviously, you can't do that. 
And then the next big thing is what I told you about earlier, MetaMask in use and Rabi is banned. Can you see that actually? I'm not sure I can zoom in on that. Mm, but it says right here, MetaMask is in use and Rabi is banned. And then you can flip that. So now Rabi is active because it detects that MetaMask is available in this browser. They are both installed. And now when you connect to a, to a D app, now you would actually use Rabi. So you can switch back and forth. And, and uh, this way, if some of the functions uh, you don't like in Rabi, you can then use it only in MetaMask or if, if, if you have specific setups or some wallets that you only want to have in MetaMask and so on. So which, which is a nice addition. And then if you flip it back and then bam, it connects actually only to MetaMask, whatever you're doing. And then all the web free, all the dApps, they, they will just connect to MetaMask. Okay, I'm gonna flip that back for now. You got your your normal selection for the network. You can select pulls in there. I'm gonna do that. Check it out. Yep, we even got the price, we got the gas, the gray, which is bonkers right now, it seems. Wow. And then we got the usual stuff, the swap. So making money. Mm, they they have some options. Oh, we can go on Uniswap. We go on one inch, zero X, open scan, all of them, all the good ones, really cool. And then you can set, also enable the trading on there and so on. We got the usual standard send and receive. That's every wallet has. And then you, you can select the chain. Let's see, let's go Ethereum. And you're given the key, the public key. Copy address, that's pretty standard. Right there, I got even some NFT <clears throat> NFT display. So if you have NFTs in your wallet, that one's easy. MetaMask does not support it. I didn't see it in Aurox. And Internet Money doesn't have it yet because it's rather new. So this is nice, you have NFTs. Uh, it doesn't have to be NFTs for Uh, just for pictures, but there are other NFT use cases and then they would populate here and they, they would shut out. It's just the, the token uh, standard that you're usually interested in. We got our transaction history. This one is obviously empty right now. And then this is a nice feature that I didn't see anywhere else. So instead of the like gasless swap, they give you the option to top up the, the gas uh, in an easy way where you can just get, what is this, $100 worth of Ethereum. So you have enough uh, to to trade, to use use uh, any kind of dApp or interact with your token so you can send something away. And it allows to basically swap one of the tokens that you already have for, for Ethereum for gas fees. So which is a nice addition. Uh, this one is a big one. This one is huge. We got approvals right in the wallet. So whenever whenever you put up something on Uniswap, whenever uh, you go to a website and say, please use all my ETH for forever, you can actually see that here and you don't need to go to a website like revoke.cash. Revoke.cash. So... Most people use this one. There are there are a few more that allow Etherscan also was, allows you to revoke and then you have you have to connect your wallet. But this is the first wallet that I see that actually allows to and, and again it opens this one, it opens in the big view. So you can see whatever you approved here. Obviously, I don't have anything approved right now. But you would be able to to revoke. Oh, where is the button? Button cannot see the button. Let me go up a little bit. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> uh, we got the revoke button here, so you can remove the approval right from your wallet without having to deal with any additional third-party website, which is cool. Okay. And then we go to the next one. Uh, we got the feedback. Uh, they are really back, big on that one, by the way. So you can give a direct message. 
on dbank.com, which is the the main. Uh, we don't need you right now. Please stop asking me. Thank you. We got the direct message options. You connect with your wallet, and then you can. It's just a normal personal sign verification. You connect to the website, so they make sure that you're not spamming it or anything. And you can either send a direct message or you can use the proposal feature, which is basically like a small GitHub uh, where, oh, enough with the pop-ups, damn, uh, where you see people bring up suggestions. Uh, it's still actively developed and you have what do we have here, for example? Please add scan QR button in send. This would help users to scan address from their mobile directly. Yeah. So this is for the mobile version. Somebody says this needs to be done. And then you can vote on this stuff, comment. Uh, there's some realized value here. Yeah. yeah, very nice. So they are gamifying, updating the wallet and improving it, which is really nice. But uh, you also have the discords and the telegram where you can probably get in and talk to the, the community. So it's not just on the website, not just probably, but you, you can. They, are, they, they have the ways to communicate. And then we go into the general options. We got the batch system. We got the uh, dbank testnet gas token. And then we have the basic lock wallet, which is actually something that is weird about this wallet. There is no lock automat, uh, no standard lock actually. Let me find the option. Was it actually right here? No. Yeah, there it is, auto lock time. So the standard is set to nether, but if you have it on a laptop and you're running around maybe somewhere, uh, I would suggest to not leave this on nether, or especially or if you have like if you are in a dorm room, if you if you have children at home or something, do not leave your uh, do not leave your wallets unlocked. Always lock them and have this timer active. So the lowest one is 10 minutes and standard one is never. I would, um, I, I wish they would add like five minutes here or something or two minutes. So it's rather weird that there is no auto lock on this one. You always have to constantly lock it yourself or close it out. So not a fan of that. We got the signature record. It's just, again, it's just, it feels like it's an advanced user wallet and then you have to actively think about it. But for a newbie, this this would be detrimental. Then we got the signature record, which is really, really nice. So anytime you do a personal ETH sign, anytime, there are, there are some websites like fatty.io, um, their, their own website, the D-Bank here, this one, this is a personal sign. So you do not send a transaction on the blockchain. You're just signing um, the ETH. It's a it's a personal signed Ethereum signed message where you just say, "Oh yeah, I am the owner of this address, and therefore I I am confirming that I'm not a spammer." It's basically like a mini captcha to connect to the website or like different DApps where you verify that you are the address owner so that you're not spoofing it for someone else or spamming what, whatever the website is. And it closed again. Let's open it up. So you get the signature record of what you signed and uh, what the text were. And we obviously don't have anything right now. So then we got the manage address, which is really nice. So we got the separation here by normal seed phrase and then the Trezor wallet. And then if you have a ledger, it will show up here and the Bitbox wallet and so on. Pretty neat, nice, orderly. Connected uh, dApps. So this is the websites you connect to. So there you will find your Uniswap, your uh, Pulsex or whatever. Let's actually do that real quick and connect it just for the fun. 
Oh no, not that one. That's a fake one. Ooh, this one. App.postx.swap. Go connect wallet. There you go. Ravi is right there. And it's not working for some reason. Did I flip it? Flip. Connect wallet. Please install a Ruby Wallet browser extension to connect Ruby Wallet. But I already did that. What are you talking about? That's weird. Oh, it's because, probably because I got that other wallet. Yeah, let's uninstall Aurox real quick. Move from Chrome. There you go. Now it works. Yeah, as you can see, uh, what I what I said earlier, like you you cannot have multiple wallets that are interacting with each other. For Rabi and MetaMask, it works because there is this flip button, but anything else you have to install it uh, one by one. And let's connect. There you go, listed by. There are some, uh, some security warnings, checking. Uh, come on, stay open. Site popularity medium. And you can have your own remarks, so if you have a really weird side that you might not uh, might not uh, might not want to use and you find out it's a scam you can just set it to blocked so you you remember it right, or set it to trusted yeah but yeah we're gonna connect to app.postx and you can see switch to pulse for the current dap it automatically switched to post chain which is nice get the v1 we can Right here, see our BD99, that's the Trezor wallet. And now we will have the connection here. So there is two ways actually to disconnect. You can disconnect it right here and you see it's on the post chain network or you go into the connected D app sites and you, you also have it there. And it's a nice note that oh, it's on the post chain network. You can pin it. So it's always at the top. If you have like a bunch, 10, 20 of them, you can, ah, it's closing again. Like the D app, and then you can also remove it here straight out of the way here. Burp. And there, bams, it's disconnected, and there it's gone. <clears throat> okay. Come back to more. And then we got the whitelist feature where when you send in between your wallets, this is uh, like a small security feature. In between your wallets, you have your addresses that you can say, oh, I'm going to always send it to them so they're safe. You got the test nets. Obviously, not all of them. Uh, they were the ones that uh, we saw earlier on the website. But you can add your custom RPC, so it doesn't really matter. So you can add any any network and any test net after the fact if you needed to. And then we got the current language, uh, MetaMask preferred D app. So if you wanted to, you can. Uh, add them just for MetaMask. And we got the auto lock timer. We had that earlier. And clear pending. So basically, this is the same as resetting the wallet or using the activity and cache deletion in MetaMask. So it, it clears out anything that is pending, that is stuck, that is uh, maybe has an error or something. And then you can restart and try to go back to the latest nonce um, you have the ability to input the correct nonce and then fix your transaction basically get unstuck whatever whatever you have your issue with and then there's some just some basic information we got the twitter the discord current version and all the supported chains yay look at them so many so yeah for a newbie again probably too much but some for somebody advanced it's really nice to see all those options all those little little things that help you and the display is top notch. I like it. Let's see, did I forget anything? 
left, I think. Otherwise, that's it. Mm, get the 12 seed words. I can add expand here. Yeah, something that's missing on this wallet. There is no easy way to see all balances on on the wallet. Maybe it's different for the desktop wallet because I'm I'm not using that. Uh, but in the browser, in the browser version, it's like uh, it, it's a pain to to go through through a list again like this. I really I really miss the expand view version where you could just have all of the addresses. I really hope they're they're gonna add that at some time at some point. Mm. Oh yeah, what's really cool though is that it actually shows you for some of the protocols the staked data. So it, so it doesn't work for Hex, for example, but I've seen it work for Hadron Icosa where it the, the wallet actually recognizes that you have and Ethereum that it's somewhere in, in a staking protocol. And then it tells you the balance of what is staked because most wallets and most uh, most apps, they only show you what you have in your wallet as native coins lying around. But this wallet actually displays all the data that is also for it recognizable on chain in any, any kind of staking protocol. So it just tallies up all the balances more correctly because if you staked something, the, the money is not lost to you. It's still there. It's still your balance. Uh, if you're on real DeFi, that is, and not on some centralized exchange or centralized platform that then uses the money for you. But uh, if you're on DeFi, you still own that money and it should be displayed as a balance, which is a nice feature in, in Revy that they have that. Uh, da, 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 da. And then there are some minor things like uh, it's indicating that something is a fork coin. Uh, just little displays here and there, so neat. Uh, but otherwise, I think we covered everything. Yeah. Let's connect to one more that's website, which is one funny thing actually so this is fatty.io it's just an example i'm gonna sign in and it actually says metamask here so this this website specifically doesn't know about rabbi wallet but the thing is rabbi wallet is using the same interface connectivity as metamask so whenever you connect the metamask It will actually populate in, or oh, it should at least, it worked for me earlier. Let me try that again. Is it on, it's on Rebby. Let me try that again. Yeah, there it is. So even though it says only MetaMask, you can actually still connect some websites to straight to Rabby Wallet and they should function as normal. So there is some uh, warnings again. Oh, wait, did we cover that for connect? No, that's a D app connection. We didn't do that yet. So this is an advanced feature where it just says that, like, hey, are you sure you want to connect to that one? We don't, we don't know it. What is that? You have the, the warning labels and so on, and you can choose to ignore the alert, which is pretty nifty. Uh, again, no remark. We can connect and then see. Uh, come on. Can you please? Oh, yeah, there. And then this is what you're signing. This is just a signed text. Like I said earlier, it's the same same display as DBank itself. Um, it's the Eve sign or personal sign. You can also view the raw data, which is the same basically. So you don't get uh, scammed. And sign and submit. Confirm. And then there you go, it's connected, it's all working, even though it's only supporting MetaMask, so to say. But yeah, now it's connected to the Rebby wallet and you, you can use it all the same. Yeah. And I think that's it. I think we covered everything. Thank you for tuning in. <clears throat> Up. 
switch back to the normal view. Don't need this website anymore. Sorry, technical difficulties, but this is basically it. Uh, follow me. Uh, thanks for joining. Oh, we got one more question. What is it? Uh, just tuning in, so I don't know if you already talked about replacing a stack transaction. If not, please do so. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me cover that. One moment. I mean, the, the process itself is the same for for all wallets. You you want to clear it out. I I mentioned it a little bit uh, when whenever the option came up. It's the it's the reset wallet. It's uh, clear activity and uh, what was the the last one? Uh, I already closed it. But, okay, it's it's you 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 remove everything from the wallet. You clear the activity data and then. Uh, the easiest way would be to go to Telegram and and open the I am stuck bot. That one will guide you through the process. Uh, let me copy paste the Telegram real quick. I am Stuckbot on Telegram, and it will guide you through the process of uh, finding your transaction, finding the nonce data, and then the usually it's the the gas that's making an issue. So you have to really pump it through uh, quickly, and you jack it up by thirty percent. So you do a zero cent of Ethereum or Pulse or whatever, any any base token you send to yourself, you jack up the base way and the priority fee by 30%. And if that doesn't work, you do it again and do like two times, three times, four times the standard way. And this way you get an, a new transaction that is overwriting the previous things that are sitting in the mempool or stuck in a wallet or whatever. And once this one goes through, the wallet will continue working as normally. I hope that answers your, your question. But there is also basic MetaMask support guide for that if you are interested. And I'm going to drop that in the chat. So those two here. On and this one. Ooh. And With this, we are at an end. Wow, this was a long stream. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me. Uh, if you have questions, uh, contact me on Telegram. I'm always available. Questions, anything, help you got. You get me, you get all other cool people in the Telegram that help out and answer questions. 
And let's see, just real quick, this guy. Is this the right one? Oh, yes. Uh, there you go. And also check out my Etsy shop. So Twitter, Telegram, Instagram, it's at BPK Baum. Got my uh, security jig uh, backup uh, solutions here if you're interested. Drop that in the chat as well. Oh, you specifically wanted the stack transaction on Rabi, but yeah, that's that's basically the same. Uh, Jay says struct transaction on Rabi, by the way. So it's, it's it's the same. You reset the transaction and you do the same. You send it on the same on the same nonce. You find out your nonce, basically your last transaction that was still um, still completed. You use it on the same nonce. Or you use the I am stack bot and then you do the 30% and uh, two times, four times, whatever it need, needs uh, to, to go through. But the process is the same in, in all wallets, basically. Yeah. Okay. Keep your seats secure. Never share them. Have them in metal. Here is a nice uh, version to, to secure them in metal. And then thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye-bye.